in the darkest hour When the world has turned away and no one's watching When the sky has turned to gray and you have no options When your voice is illegal, only choice for the people Is to stand up proudly in the face of death It ain't a waste of breath when you speak up loudly On behalf of the kids in the street with no pot to piss in Living on the young cause their pop is missing Don't know if he's dead or he's locked in prison Disappeared, they consider him the opposition And now I'm having visions of dreams I shouldn't see Like could we be this close? Nah, I couldn't be But if the people in Egypt and Tunis could do this Decide they fate, then why wouldn't we? Our first guest is in the field and Colin, what's going on? Yo, man? yo what up, Jay? How nice, you doing? Nice to meet you, man. You was actually on the show, the only show I've ever missed. So <laughs> it's nice to finally meet you, bro. Definitely. Um, for the people that's new to you, just tell us a little something about yourself. Um, recording artist based out of Chicago, grew up in Kentucky, family's originally from Africa, Libya. Mm -hmm. uh, father was part of the opposition movement out there, was in jail, tortured, after five years he escaped. Mm -hmm. and I grew up in Kentucky, which sounds random, but I grew up, that was part of the, was kind of the headquarters of the opposition movement to the Gaddafi regime, so uh, I had a pretty interesting upbringing. In Kentucky? In Kentucky, yeah. Wow. That was the last place I would have guessed. Well, that's if they wanted to go somewhere and nobody was looking for them. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, We lived the first few years of my life on the run. We lived in a bunch of different countries, a bunch of different cities, so that was the first place we got to settle down. Right. Right. You hear that, people? If you ever got to hide somewhere, don't go to Big Mama's house. Go to Kentucky. This uh, is a <laughs> I grew up in Lex, actually. Kentucky oh, okay. Wildcats, baby. All right. Oh, that's what's up. So, <laughs> since the last time you was here, you uh, completed your Above the Clouds uh, spring tour. Right. You went to the Netherlands, United Kingdom, France, Italy, mm -hmm. uh, United Arab, uh, Emirates, Emirates yeah. yeah, Egypt, Libya. You was everywhere. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. That's How cool. was that, man? It was beautiful, man. That was my first time. I've traveled a little bit coming up. That was my first time traveling the world for music purposes, and it's just... It's amazing to see how hip hop can kind of build bridges between people, all different backgrounds, different languages. You know, I'll be in places where people don't even speak English, but they know the words to the songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was your best experience over there? Oh, man. You know, I'm one of them people, like, every city that I go, I just try to find the best in it. I'm a big foodie, so as long as I can find, like, a good spot to eat, wherever city I'm at, it's cool. Manchester, England probably showed the most love. Dubai was diet tight, so, you know, every city is cool. What's some of your places to go to? To eat that you love. Here in Chicago? Anywhere. Just whatever pops up. Oh man. I, that you uh, love to talk about or that you had to talk about. Every now. city, I mean, like here in America, San Francisco got the best sandwich spots called Ike's. Best chicken and waffles is in LA, mm -hmm. Serving Spoon. Um, no offense, I'm a Chicago one day one chicken and waffles too. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just trying to catch on. Yeah, LA got a lot. We that's, know it. Yeah, that's a lot of, that's yes, a lot of spots. <laughs> What's your best food? What did you like to eat? Like, Okay, Cause I'm a pizza person. I do pizza, <laughs> I do sushi, I do Italian, I do um, sushi. So I like spicy food, I do Indian food, you okay. know. I love Libyan food, but we don't got no Libyan restaurants, so I gotta get the home cooked for that. Man, good yeah. ass. I love spicy food, so shout out to Coco's in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that's great, but how? Wh who had the best women? At all <laughs> right. kind of, Really, come on, man. Uh, I mean, everywhere got, you know, beautiful women. Um, Thank you. I say in Dubai, people take care of themselves the most. That like everywhere I've seen, like, uh -huh. you know, everybody takes care of themselves. Like, men and women, like, even the bathrooms there. I always talk about, people like, Dubai is so um, amazing, right? Tall buildings and indoor skiing. I'm like, listen, to me, the most impressive thing was the bathrooms. Like, mm, you, I like could, that too. you could take a nap on the ground in a public restroom over there. And mm. every, time <laughs> like that, every time you have somebody uses a stall, uh -huh. somebody comes in there and cleans it right away. That's like, good. you know, so I think Dubai, people just in general, it's a real kind of image conscious place. Did Michael Jackson there? I don't know, everybody spent uh -huh. some time there. Yeah, Dubai did, uh, Michael did move out there for a little bit, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. I know Kanye spends a lot of time out there. Pretty much everybody. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was it like filming the Dakota? And tell people what's that all about. Uh, I'm excited about that. I think it should be coming up within a month, but uh, it's for Jay Z's Life and Times online magazine. And he also just launched a channel that's going to be distributed through Google and YouTube. And Decoded is basically. They interview rappers uh, to rap a cappella and break down their lyrics. And so I was the very first wholly independent artist to be on there ever. Like everybody else was common, Waka Flocka, Nas, Two Chains, you know, Big Crit, Freddie Gibbs. Oh, that's what's uh, up. So it was beautiful, man. They flew down from New York, the crew. Uh, it was Ramadan, so I was fasting that day. So they just kind of came along with me, kicked it all day long. Uh, and I'm excited for it to come out. Mm, that's what's up. What was your most memorable mm -hmm. show? Most memorable show? Mm -hmm. Oh man, um, 
you know, we, we filmed this thing called Sing Freedom, which is it's kind of like MTV Diary. It's a music documentary show, and every episode they follow different artists. So uh, it's two production companies, one in New York and one in Egypt, that work together. And so they came with me. I went to Libya for the first time in my life in January. We could never go before. We would have got killed or whatever. Right. So we had like an eight-person film crew follow me, and they captured like every moment. Um, like getting off the plane, seeing my family for the first time. So that's coming out, I think, the first of the year, and that was just an amazing experience. And if it looks like I'm crying, I ain't crying. It's just the allergies is real. That's bad. okay. That's all right. <laughs> what was it like being on camera all the time like that? It was crazy, man. You really learn a lot about how reality TV works. You know, I have to be in the van. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to get out first, set everything up, camera, sound gun, uh -huh. you know, before you get out. And it's kind of cool, man. I went to this. So my father, he's from, he's Amazigh, which is like the indigenous people in North Africa. They was there before the Arabs were there, you know, they've been there thousands of years. So he's from this little village in the West, and uh, they don't even got internet or nothing in the village. So I went out there, obviously it's their first time seeing the big sound guns, cameras. They got the family all lined up outside. So I go up there, hi, how you doing? First time, we crying, hugging, kissing. It's like a beautiful moment. We walk inside the house, and then the director's like, cut, that was beautiful. <laughs> Can y'all do it again? And call right. it? <laughs> right, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, luckily, they had a lot of good sports, but there's a lot of, you know, the TV definitely made it interesting. Right. And, uh, it put us in positions to look at stuff we probably wouldn't have looked at. We went to this prison up with Samane when all my uncles stayed there. And one of my uncles was there from 84 to 2002, mm -hmm. and they killed like 1,200 people in 1996. Wow. And so he took us on a tour, showed us all the places where he used to get tortured at and everything. Speaking of people getting killed, Jay Holland's in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta explain a tall black guy walking in the building. Right after that. <laughs> you don't have any accent. What's your nationality? Uh, so yeah, my family's from Libya. And um, you know, it's um, it's a diverse country. So my mother is Arabic and mm -hmm. my father is Amazigh. Oh, There's a lot of different okay. ethnicities. It's kinda like it's a country maybe similar to Brazil where you got people of all colors, people, you know, Make Akon look light skin. Damn. Damn. That's a hell of a feat. <laughs> <Right? laughs> that's what's up. So, um, you got a feature spread in Rolling Stone magazine. Like, that's amazing itself. So, how was it like? What was that experience like? It's dope, man. We've, uh, it's crazy. Like, a lot of people be like, oh, you got a whole page. That's dope. That's dope. But to me, we did three separate interviews. They're all like two, three hours long, mm -hmm. and they narrowed it down to like a page and a couple quotes. I'm like, me, I only got a page. Everybody was like, nah, it's Rolling Stone magazine. Like a full page is a big deal. So yeah. uh, it was a cool experience, man. We did, we did like interviews in Detroit, Chicago, and New York for that just that one article. The oh, reporter man. would kind of keep catching me and updating, and uh, it was dope, man. It was definitely a good look. That's what's up. So what are some of the things that you love about hip hop, man? Man. Um, I feel like hip hop is kind of like a voice for the voiceless, you know what I'm saying? People that don't have a voice that ain't gonna be able to write in newspapers and be on CNN and talk about stuff. People that can't be journalists can get the word out. They can talk, we can talk about whatever we want to talk about and we can create our own audience. So it don't really matter if the man is listening to us or not. Right. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing, man, I, I just think it builds bridges, man. Like anybody can connect to the struggle. Like, you know, whether it, it began here in New York, but there's people overseas, man. And, Africa, South America, Europe, everywhere that can just connect to the struggle. So um, it's just beautiful, man. I think it really connects people. And if you go to another community mm -hmm. that's not the hip hop community, you'll find people that maybe graduated Harvard and went to all the school, but they might not be as educated about life as your average hip hop fan. Your average hip hop fan might have dropped out of high school, but he can tell you about um, Muslims or vegetarians and Filipinos. Mm -hmm. You know, he got a more diverse kind of set of people that he's been exposed to. So I think that's powerful. Right, that's what's up. All right, your song, Can't Take Our Freedom, mm -hmm. went on YouTube first week, got 50,000 views. Yeah. And they pulled it down. Why did they pull it down? Man, it's fishy. I'm, I, to be honest with you, I'm still kind of salty about it. Conspiracy. Um, yeah. You know, YouTube's official Twitter account tweeted it too, like, check out Kyle Dem's videos buzzing. Right. So it's kind of like, why would they co sign it? Uh -huh. and take right. it down. And the right. day they took it down was on the front page of CNN.com. Wow. Damn. The busiest news day, Tuesday. So I was like, man, that could have been a lot of views. But um, I don't know, man. I don't know if, you know, there's a lot of anti kind of Gaddafi stuff on there. I don't know if he had his people doing the cyber flag or something. Yeah. But, did you, uh, did you, so basically it pissed off the money people. <laughs> that, that's usually when things get pulled, you know, no matter, no matter, you know, um, how socially conscious 
the people out that work for a company are, like they, they can yeah. be socially conscious. When the people up top with the money get upset, that's when everything gets yeah. pulled. <laughs> yeah, you know, I had some, yeah. had some exclusive footage. It was a little graphic, I ain't gonna lie. It had bodies and stuff like that before the media got in the living. We showed what was going on. That ain't the first time yeah. bodies showed up yeah. on YouTube. I seen a couple of Lady, Gaga, Lady Gaga videos that were more, more graphic than mine. So. Uh, Jay, you, can, you can ask Jay. I, see, I literally find videos of bad stuff happening to people, like getting ran over by cars on YouTube. Yeah, so, I'm so, like, <laughs> exactly. so I'm like, So I'm like, I think if it's graphic and it makes people dumber, they Keep it, but if you try to teach some people something, exactly. Yeah, you just said a keyword. If it if it if it keeps the the the, the ignorant status quo yeah. going, then it's okay. <laughs> but if it makes someone think, it's not. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. All right. So how does it feel to be a voice of that movement you got right now? Um, I mean, it's cool, man. I'll say I'm a voice. You know, what I'm saying we did an article that came out in Complex. It was kind of embarrassing. It was like meet the rapper who informed the world about Olivia. Like you know, I did it on my own. It's, I remember when it first happened, we were camped out in D.C. and we all, like 30 of us little kids in the exiles and everybody had a laptop, everybody's tweeting, everybody's hitting up the news, Anderson Cooper, BBC, whoever, and trying to, you know, talk to people in Libya and get them to upload, you know, stuff on Google Voice and stuff and share their video. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know personally, I'm like incompetent with technology. I'm not a computer guy, so right. if it had been me trying to do it on my own, I wouldn't have got very far. You know, there's a lot of people that... Um, Work really hard, and uh, I just happen to be a musician, so I probably got more credit than I deserve. But it is what it is. That's what's up. As yeah. far as being like conscious and everything in hip hop, um, what is your, I guess, opinion on that? Because you know, a lot of people, especially right now, like conscious for some reason is like not popular, yeah. and I really hate that. Like in the nineties, it was not popular. Like, it just doesn't sell. Yeah. <laughs> I disagree with that though. I disagree I mean, with that. Go ahead. What would you I disagree with that. It sells. It just doesn't get mainstream attention. It sells. Like I like I sell records. I watch numbers. So let's not say it doesn't sell because it does sell. Okay. The thing is, the meat, the, the the outlet, like the average person doesn't want to think or do work. They like work done for them mm -hmm. and they like people to think for them. So what happens is basically all of the media outlets that's readily accessible for the uh, ignorant masses, I want to say. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Anyway, <laughs> I want to say, you know, so yeah, they like, oh, nobody's paying attention to that. But for every one person that thinks like you or you or me, there's another 10. So these people are buying this music, it just doesn't get the mainstream exposure that it should get. Right. Just to be honest, I don't even know anymore if I know what conscious even means. Like, there's so many people that I grew up idolizing, I thought they were so smart, and I meet them in real life. Dumb as hell. Dumb, yeah, and it's just a business to them. You know, there's certain artists where it's like, that conscious thing, they just got the niche audience, yeah. they might even believe what they're talking about. You know, right. they might be the foulest person behind the scenes, but it's a business, and it's like, I just don't know what it means anymore. You might find somebody like Common that's no I'm not hating on Common, but you know, Common's known as being conscious. Common got on some shoes that I can't pronounce and a um, shirt that I can't afford. He don't come to the hood. And then somebody else like Jeezy might, you know, he wears some Air Forces and a T and he's in tune with the hood and stuff. You know, so I don't, well, like I don't really know what it means. I'm becoming more self-conscious. Yeah, <laughs> self-conscious. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, and I, not, I know you weren't speaking on common per se, I mean, yeah, like, but like, no, like, everybody likes nice things. I mean, like, I'm, I'm very, like, so, socially and, 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 and politically aware of, of the things that's going on and, and, and like, the foulness in, in the system here. But yeah, like, I, I did drop a bag on certain things that I wear right, right. because I like nice things. Um, you can be allowed to like nice things but still be socially conscious, it's when you're like willingly ignorant that bothers mm. me. And we have a lot of willingly ignorant people right. in the world. I so. think you just gotta make good music too at the end of the day. And you can't come off as preachy. Some people, they're gonna be preaching at you, you know what I'm saying? And it's, nobody wants to hear right. that. Like, can, uh, I try to never preach, I just offer a piece of my life. You can like it, you can not like it, but I'm not gonna like tell you what to because do. Because if they, if they grew up a certain type of world, they used to something, like you can't, it's hard to bring people over into your world and, you know, and they've been taught something, it's like a habit. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, like, and when you say you drop bags on nice things, you know, I was reading Russell Simmons' book, and he was saying how black people, they spend a lot of money on things because it shows what, you know, what where they're going. It kind of, like, shows where they're at in their in they life now because they didn't have it back in the day. That's well, what the book No, no, I know, and I agree with that. But see, for me, like, if I bought one, I can afford at least five. That's always my philosophy. I'm not going to buy. Five no, range no, I'm going to buy. But see, I wouldn't buy a Range Rover <laughs> at least. And I'm saying until I could at least afford to buy five. That's my mentality. I grew up on the like. If you made twelve dollars, you put seven away and lived off of five. That's my. That's my so philosophy. We need to learn that, man. It's, you know, there was that ESPN uh, 30 for 30 came out about broke athletes. Oh, my yeah. God. Anton yeah. Walker, that's sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, my, that's my Kentucky. You know, Anton Walker came yeah. back, and he's from Chicago. But I don't know if y'all know about Delonte West, and he mm -hmm. had his past. Yeah. The Mavericks found out he was sleeping in the locker room last year. Like, he's Damn. homeless, you know, NBA player. He tweeted after the show. I thought he was going to be like, yeah, I'm glad they're going to prevent other athletes from falling to the same stuff I fell in. But he was like, nah. He's like, I don't want other people spending my money when I die. I'm just going to do it big. You know, what the? Like, bro, like, you sleeping in the but see, that's, oh, willingly, oh, that's the willing ignorant that right. I'm talking about. Like, it's just like, my thing is, if you know better, do better. Like, most people don't know, and most people don't want to know because no one makes you accountable yeah. for your actions. Mm -hmm. you well, know people, I mean? Most people that do know better just don't want to do better. Yeah. They, they I, mean, it, it, I think it starts at comfortable. home. Comfortable. It, it starts at home, and, and it, you know, we got some, we got this problem in Chicago, to be honest. I've been ruffling a couple feathers with some comments on Facebook and stuff, but we got these kids out here. You know, and they videos 13 and stuff, and guns and hoes, and no, no, like, language. With that being said, what do you think of the state of Chicago music I right mean, now? I mean, listen, I'm going to be real, like, and I'm not a hater. It's like, if you say anything, you're just a hater. I'm not mad at the kids, man, but it's like they got these adults in their video that's co-signing it. And the adults the ones that know better. Thank I ain't you. mad at Lil exactly. Mouse. But what's exactly. I mean, you know, I was 13, I ain't mad at anything. Look, like, right. look, here, here, here's, here's my thing with that. He's I, duplicate. Yeah. I saw a 50-year-old dude mm -hmm. in traffic. My wife and I, yesterday, in traffic, we're at the red light on 47th and Pulaski. <laughs> Dude, like 50. <laughs> like, my, I'm calling in with my youngest. He, <laughs> like, this, he got his cap turned backwards. I'm like, yo, so you got gray hairs in your beard. What are you doing? <laughs> like, this is crazy. This is the issue. You got grown-ass men, instead of teaching young boys how to be grown-ass men, they're trying to be young ass boys. Yeah, trying to say it again. You understand what I'm saying? So, who the hell do they have to look up to? Because they don't like my mama don't coddle them because that's what mama does. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there's a shortage of stand up guys in these communities. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like I told Diesel yesterday, I didn't have a father. Like, but my neighbor was a pimp, and he took time out of his day to show me how to tie a tie. Something just that simple. Right. He's like, man, that's a, uh, that suit is nice, man. He started to tell you, he said, oh, man, tell your mother don't buy you no more clip-ons. He took his tie off, wow. said, I'm going to show you how to do this. And he tied the tie. And from there on out, I knew how to tie a tie. Just something that small, I went through. I, this dude was a pimp. He got holes on the straw. <laughs> but he saw a little dude, like, without a father in his life, so he took the time to show me how to tie a tie. Why don't you take those same steps? And it's like... These other rappers are co-signing these young dudes' songs because they're older, they're in their 30s, and they're so desperate to just align themselves with young people. Mm -hmm. When you the boss, you the, you the one going platinum, you should be a, a leader, not a follower, but they so quick to just feel young, they just going to co-sign whatever these kids doing instead mm -hmm. of being like, yo, you can still make music and do it like this. And that's what I'm talking about, being conscious in your intentions. To be honest, like, it's like T.I., you know, he had that show where... Um, on MTV where he's like helping kids come yeah. out, you know, there was troubled youth or whatever, and I was, it, it kind of felt like a publicity stunt to me, but I couldn't question it. I was like, you know, you don't know a man's intention. No, that was his community service. Yeah. Like he had, he had, no, but he had to do community service, and he chose to do it that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. but if you really sincere about that, why are you hopping on these songs with these little kids that are talking about the same things? Who's he on the song with? I can't remember. It was one of, I don't know if it was Lil Reese. Was it Lil Reese? I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, see, he's see in you have the studio. He's in the studio. I'm like, you know, I hope y'all together, you, you know, you being sincere and just trying to show them a different way. Because these kids, it's not their fault. They got a bunch of yes men around them. And well, it's going to come back to home. See, songs are songs. It's about 
what is he dropping on him personally in right. conversation to me? Because at the end of the day, this is a business. You right. understand? And you have to sell records. But what my what jewels is he dropping on him? It was Lil Reese. It, was. Yeah. it just, Mark, it just Mark, like just you said, it. like you said, it's uh, it, it's kind of like history repeating itself. Like when you seen that fifty year old man doing all that, you know, it's just history repeating itself. You guys ever heard of the one hundred monkey syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> this should be good. I'm familiar with it, but I don't know it. Like, well, I'll let you guys Google it. I don't want to get too much into it, but uh, uh, I, we really don't have no stand-up dudes. And the mothers that make things no better for the, you know, raising a young man into, into becoming a man because we... Back in the day, it was really uh, they they babyfied their their boys Indeed. and were tough on the girls. So the girls are tough, and the boys they going down the wrong path. Like like they don't they don't they weak. You know what I'm it's saying? Him. And 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 they don't know how to raise a young man, a young boy into becoming a man because they were babyfied. They couldn't do no wrong in the in the woman's eye, the mother's eye, and the girl, you know, she's always strict punishment with the females and you can't do this, you can't do this, but he can do this, he can do that and I was one of them, like my mother stayed on me, I couldn't go outside, if I went outside, don't leave off the porch my brother can go down the street, get into some trouble, she's she gonna be okay with it afterwards, you know, I just was like you know, he was never punished you know, I was always the one that was she was putting her foot into, you know, like lack of love. So now I'm more stern, strong. He's incarcerated. You know what I'm saying? And and it's just like But, but it's a it's a cycle and it it's happening right, right now. Yeah, and it, and it, it really is. And I just had to catch myself like, you know, uh the, the older you get, you're supposed to get more conscious and 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 you know, know better. And I have three girls and one boy. My three girls are 18, 15, 13. My son is 10. And they always say, you always baby in him. You always, that's why he don't know. And that's why we have to do everything for him. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, you know what? They, they bring this to my attention. This is what's going on. Uh, so now I'm caving them in the chest, like giving them blows. Like, right. you know, look, look, look. You know, like, look, 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 I, I changed it and I see that it's getting more better like I'm raising him to be a young gentleman you know open the doors up for me and your sister do that take out the garbage but when he he's coming to me he's telling he's dry snitching doing all this doing stuff to them and knowing he's gonna get away and I've seen it because he didn't know I was standing right there when he told on his sister you know she you know she, I got in her ass and he was standing there licking her tongue out like that you know like I said oh yeah you been playing me so I don't do it anymore. Look, here, here's the thing with that. Like, my wife and I are at odds a lot. Like, about, we have two boys. And she's like, oh, you I'm like, look, I'm not raising, like, like you see these little boys running around here, they soft as baby shit. That's not what we're doing around here. We're raising grown men. I'm like, mm -hmm. now, we either do this my way, or I fall back and you do it the best of your ability, and, and we'll see how that goes. But when they run your ass over and start cursing you out and all that, then I'll step back in, and you're not going to like the way I step back in. So leave me to my business to raise men, because I know how to be a man, because I am one. You've never been one, never will be one. Let me do my shit. That's so, yeah. But it's not hard. Don't get me wrong. It's not hard. I mean, it, it uh, uh, just girl or boy supposed to needs both parents. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's kind of rough and tough for us to, you know, raise a young man to be a young boy. You to can be raise a man. him to be a respectable Ooh, adult. It's, yes, but, but it's hard. That's a different discussion that I right. want to get on. That. It's hard. Hey, Cop, I'm going to put you in the hot seat, all right? You ready? <laughs> all right. Um, I'm going to ask you, say two things, you got to pick one or the other. But you got to do it quick. You can't call. Uh -huh. Like, wait, what are you talking about? You just got to go. All right? Bullshit. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, All right, Nas or Jay-Z? Nas. Facebook or Twitter? Facebook. A Lambo or Bentley? Bentley. Nikki or Lil' Kim? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? This is the question that everybody's like, oh. Uh, I got it, too. You got to pick one. Say make it, I guess. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Cubs or socks? Uh socks. Mm -hmm. Common yes. or common or most deaf? Most deaf. Family guy or South Park? Family guy. Xbox or Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All day. Biggie or Pop? Hot. Mac or PC? Uh 
That's what's up. All right, Kyle. Ooh, he he <laughs> that that <laughs> nigga and Lil Kim get everybody. <laughs> like I've not, I've, I've only heard one person when you do the bigger pop be like, oh, big, because I'm big team big all the way. Like, right, yeah. Pop, I like pop, but I like on pop, like. Yes. There was nothing like like socially like and, and things like that, yeah, but just there was no lines where I was just like, Oh, that was ill like for big me, I was like, it's like uh, my, biggie face yeah, my pops died when I was really young. <laughs> um, um, after my father passed my uncle started moving in and they were really young. My uncle's only like maybe eight years older than me and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they were all in pop hard, so it's, I mean, as far as back as I can remember, we were yeah. always riding a pop and we used to um, the community around me was one, two you know, every, all the generation that was like three, four years older than me, all of them dealing drugs, going to jail. We'd be 12 years old witnessing, you know, dudes robbing uh, RVs and stuff like that. Damn. Uh, and it was like living at the pot. We thought, you know, it was living thug life. <laughs> but yeah. um, I don't know, I just always, always, he always resonated with me. I used to be a stand, like I bought his poetry books, everything. The rose that grew from concrete, like just that line to me mm -hmm. is so deep. You're uh, a true pop fan. So um, you got any uh, upcoming projects coming out? Yeah, so we've been doing this, I've been doing music, you know, since I was sixth grade, but full time with no other work, it's been about two years, but I still haven't released a debut album. So we got the debut album, Above the Clouds, coming out, mm -hmm. and we got a follow-up free album called I Knew Him When. And uh, so we drop in the first video, Cloud Conversations, uh, November 6th, and I think I brought the song to y'all. Yeah, I got, I'm going to play that um, in one minute. What's the name of it again? It's called Cloud Conversations. All right, that's what's up. So if anyone want to reach you, book you, what's the best way? Uh, this is M.com, Facebook.com slash this is at this is M, Twitter, and uh, Instagram. I spell Kyler just like DJ Kyler, K H A L E D, baby. We the best. Anyway, <laughs> we are going to take a quick break, and I want to thank you again for coming out, man. Sure, man. Thank Much you. love. Have a good time with y'all. That's what's up. We're going to come back. Uh, comedian B. Cole's up next, so everybody stay tuned for more of the J. Davis show. Yeah, yeah. In the darkest hour, when the world has turned away and no one's watching, when the sky has turned to gray and you have no options, when your voice is illegal, only choice for the people is to stand up proudly in the face of death. It ain't a waste of breath when you speak up loudly on behalf of the kids in the street when no pots are pissing. Living on the but I'm writing one for you. What's up? This your girl Jamisha Trice, and I'm listening to the Jay Davis Show every Saturday from two to four. Jay Davis, you nasty.